sticker, sir? <laughs> Um, I'm Tom Welch. I'm chairman of the PUC. This with me is Dave Littell, another one of the commissioners, and Matt Capley of my staff is over here. Um, as you no doubt know the case is a commission investigation of a proposed lease and contract for sale of water between Freiburg and Nestle Waters of North America. We opened the investigation to determine whether, first of all, whether our approval were required, and second, whether it should be given. Um, the reason for the public input session is to allow us to hear directly from affected members of the public. As I said, there is a, there is a statement, probably ran out of copies, but there is a procedural order out in the case that sets a schedule, and just to give you a sense of it, there's going to be a, a formal hearing in Augusta or Hollowell on May 7, and then some briefs, and the decision is probably going to be sometime in July. I am concerned, Commissioner Welch that only five years ago, as a lawyer for Pierce Atwood, you advised Nestle concerning the reorganization of the Freiburg Water Company, particularly on how best to present that issue to the PUC, and that you continued to provide Nestle advice up to just two years ago. Commissioner Littell, as an attorney at Pierce Atwood, you didn't take on Nestle cases, but as a partner, did you receive a share of the firm's profits heavily contributed to by Nestle. As DEP commissioner, you evaluated and signed off a number of well permits for Nestle's extraction operations. This was part of your job, but you too come to this hearing with quite a history of involvement with Nestle. It is amazing to consider that out of the many Mainers qualified to be PUC commissioners, the three that were actually picked have all had strong connections with Nestle. I believe many ordinary people, as well as experts in government ethics, would conclude that the Commissioner's ties to Nestle are collectively so strong that the Commission as a whole is unqualified to hear this case. Because the proposed contract, to me, is unfair, unprecedented in its length, with climate changing so fast, and with difficulties with the Freiburg Water Company that are too deep for me to be able to fully understand, you may need to lay aside some customary assumptions about how you normally hear cases. Your job is to do all you can within your decision-making power to ensure that the people of Freiburg and the local area have access, good access, to fresh water far into the future. In the meantime, I will do my best to hold some trust in you. I, um, Mr. Black, the public advocate, told me to ask you guys. When I asked him, he did not have an answer. And so, when I, in my investigating into uh, Docket 263, it was about quality issues. There were severe quality issues going on with the water. They, you know, people need to come. We were getting chunks of stuff in the water. There's a lot going on. Now, when I looked through the docket, that docket was about quality issues in the Pure Mountain Spring Well. And they had required testing done of, uh, during that time. But the testing that was required was done only on well two. There was no testing done whatsoever on the Pure Mountain Spring well. Now, why did you test well two and not well three? I see your name on the dockets, you know, so I, that's why I'm asking, because I'm concerned about that. Because the town, that, that well was not properly monitored for four and a half years. And yet, in, in, from 2004 to 2007, or 2008, I should say, and yet, in the docket, you guys were uh, checking out the tests and doing tests of well two, but nothing on well three. Now, uh, the way I understand it, you know, even though right now the docket 2008-52 is the latest docket, that's not the only one that's current. Am I right? I'm, I'm a local business owner, and uh, we have a veterinary hospital down the road. And um, in particular, just to cut to the chase here, when I read the agreement, I was surprised to see that um, it seemed, in one area in particular, it seemed to favor Nestle over local businesses. It is the PUC that has a social responsibility to protect the public from harm, and there's plausi uh, plausible risk of it. <coughs> Commissioners Welch and Littell, please note that you embark on new waters with this contract. Voters in a rural California water district recently voted down a 50-year-long contract with Nestle to extract drinking water, leaving the 45-year 
Nestle Freiburg Water Company contract as the longest in the country? How can you be so, so sure that you will not do harm to local people if you give away so much public control over water resources for almost the next half century? I'm here to testify about my experience with Poland Spring because I know a lot of people have expressed concern about them as a business partner for the community. And I would just like to say that when I moved to Freiburg, one of the things I was most excited about was I actually got to drink the water that, Poland, that it comes in a Poland Spring bottle. Some folks have questioned the quality of our water. We were recently voted the best tasting water in Maine. So I don't think there's any question about the quality of water. I agree with what a previous speaker said, that Maine does have trillions and trillions of gallons of excess water. So with that in mind, I think we have to look at, is there a benefit to harvesting water? Is there a benefit to extracting it and selling it as bottled water? The initial entry of Nestle into Freiburg was done without any public notification, but rather through the back door by Freiburg Water Company and Maine's current pumping laws. It was very deceptive in my eyes. As former chairman of the Freiburg Planning Board in 2008, I was involved when Nestle wanted to expand their extraction through a third fee-free pump in the town of Denmark that is connected through pipes to a second pumping station in Freiburg. During our procedural meetings, just like this hearing, the citizens of Freiburg who showed up to the hearing overwhelmingly did not want Nestle to take any more water from this region. Of the nearly 100 people who attended, only two people supported it and one was Hugh Hastings. The board voted to reject the pumping station, which was supported by the Freiburg Board of Appeals, yet Nestle sued the town. Unfortunately, the Maine Supreme Court overruled us to support this gigantic international corporate corporation. The town now has many years of water withdrawal from Wards Brook already to contend with, as well as maintaining roads for 50 heavy water trucks without any financial re re support from Nestle or Freiburg Water Company. Remember that the Public Utilities Commission was created, and this was taken directly from your website, to ensure that Maine consumers enjoy safe, adequate, and reliable services. This is 2013. And I would like to see the two of you be on the cutting edge, just like you're, on being, you're out on a limb now, you know, by, by considering, you know, a 50-year contract, which is absolutely absurd, as we all know. I mean, but you're, you're listening, you know, you're listening to these two parties and trying to consider, and you're here, thank you. But you also should be out on a limb, too, and I'm very serious about this, is to leading the way for your other six PUCs in New England to realize that our world has changed and we have to consider sustainability. Average citizens, including myself, may be able to stop them in small towns, but only you can stop them at the state level. Do that. Thank you. Back in the day when my family owned property to the river's edge, the law, the rights, or whatever you want to call it was that we owe, own to the water's edge and the person on the other side owned to the water's edge. Now that was in effect as common sense because if the river changed or the water moved or the sandbar got pushed on your side, your cattle could still drink from the river. That was common sense. What would we do as common folk, town folk, taxpayers do if the river moves with Nestle? What do we do? just have a hard time should we as citizens be thankful that Nestle's willing to donate to us our own bottled water <laughs> I guess that to me that's I believe in sharing and I do think the water should be shared I I do know I'm, I'm a former trustee of the water district I know there is monitoring I know there will be more monitoring um, I believe in sustainability all of that, that's, you know, everyone said some wonderful things. But um, the bottom line is Nestle Poland Springs is here. Um, they will continue to be here. Groundwater extraction, creating dissolved silica losses in a drainage, is one of these subtle, unnatural flow impacts. 
Ground water contains 10 to 40 times more dissolved silica than surface water runoff into streams and lakes. This dissolved silica and fresh water flow eventually reaches coastal waters where it is crucial for healthy diatom populations in the superior ocean fishery that depends on them. Ocean diatoms are responsible for removal of over one-third of atmospheric carbon dioxide and restoring oxygen to the atmosphere. The diatoms also reduce ocean acidification. Every water tanker that leaves Freiburg and other groundwater extraction locations not only extracts water from the river basin, but also changes the dissolved silica nutrient flux from land to the Gulf of Maine. As the worldwide demand for water increases, groundwater extraction may become more and more common in every main river watershed, and the overall nutrient flux change impact will increase. The Freiburg Water Company is not a healthy company. Uh, financially, it is losing. Uh, in 2007, it lost over $10,000. 2008, over $65,000. This is a significant impact, uh, can, can cause a significant impact to the ratepayers of the district. The long term sustainability of the company is vital to the ratepayers in keeping rates at a reasonable level. Um, there's been a comment made, we do have very low uh, rates, and I think that's a good thing. But we do have to ask, are they reasonable? Will they help allow the Freiburg Water Company to remain viable and healthy? And is the deal that they are proposing with Nestle Waters a good deal for the company? Well, number one, is the most valuable asset the Freiburg Water Company owns, period. It's been stated by many, many uh, uh, boards, et cetera. It has more valuable than anyone. We are, they are, the Freiburg Water Company is on the verge of giving up control of that most valuable asset for a long period of time. Considering they've been involved with Nestle's for a long period of time, their financial viability is questionable at best. The debt, the operating losses that they are incurring, I'd have to conclude as a business person that this deal, the deal that they have, had better be a darn sight better than the one they are currently operating under. I think this is a business move uh, to hopefully bring a, a bottling plant to this community. As far as the term of the agreement, who is going to come here and spend 50 or 60 million dollars like they did in Kingfield on a short-term agreement? Maybe I'm opposed to any contract with Nestle Waters because it's an international company and under international law you may be bound by trade law, treaty law, which will trump any state, local, federal law. I'd like to see the Maine Public Utilities Commission um, investigate that with their lawyers and find out what the implications of any contract with an international company would be under treaty law. Uh, I'm a local business owner here in town. I own a bakery, and I also sat on the planning board when we had multiple um, bulk water extraction permits before us. I was also on the board when the Emory Garrett study was um, initiated, and I'd like to say with regard to the Emory Garrett study, um, multiple Per, uh, multiple applicants who have test wells were the ones who supplied the information for that study to be done and the modeling for that study, um, for the information for the modeling for that study. The information and the results of the modeling um, would benefit those people who have a financial interest in the health of the aquifer. Rick Eastman being one of the permit holders, um, as well as the Freiburg Water Company. Um, another issue that the planning board failed to discuss was allocation. Um, there was no, no information in the study or any of the follow-ups to discuss allocation. How do you allocate this resource? Is it first come, first serve? Is it the law of the biggest straw? Is it absolute dominion? Um, how do you allocate that? How do you allocate that within the Freiburg Water Company? Do you allocate it to the residents first, then the business holders, then to any contract 
holder that has a contract with the Freiburg Water Company. These were issues that were discussed in 2003, 2004, and 2005, and were never resolved within the permitting process within this community. Um, I still have a concern about that. Um, and since I sat on the planning board, I actually have opened a business that uses water. And water is very critical to making bread. So I have a concern um, with the contract as it stands, um, as you are presenting it, with, with the um, reduction if there is a problem. Um, if, it's an ex if it's a proportional reduction in the amount of water being pumped for the local businesses, I don't even use my quarterly allocation that I pay for. I do not use 100 cubic feet. So if I am proportionally reduced as a result of the health of the aquifer, I'm out of business. Um, I was a selectman uh, from 2007 to 2010. And uh, there were a number of issues that came up during that time. Well, three is the primary source of drinking water for this town. And um, in 2008, um, uh, one of the uh, uh, consumers of this water approached me. Um, he's in the audience now, Mr. Harriman. Um, and he, he was curious as to what was in his drinking water, so he, he called the Maine Drinking Water Program and asked for any tests, and they indicated that they didn't have any tests for well number three, um, and that there, there were none since its inception uh, submitted by Freiburg Water Company. So I called the Maine Drinking Water Program and spoke with uh, Dan Piasecki, the representative at the time, <coughs> excuse me, for this area, and he indicated that indeed there was no monitoring schedule and uh, that he could find no tests done uh, since the inception of the well. So I asked him to come out and immediately test the water and, and test both wells, number two and three. Um, he did come out and uh, tested number three and then a few months later tested number two. Um, the water came back uh, different from the well in number two. There was slightly higher nickel. There were some phthalates from plastic residues in it. Uh, that was unexplained at the time. He couldn't explain why that, the phthalates were in there, but uh, that was almost a five-year span of time where the people of this town didn't know what, their, what was in their drinking water or were drinking something that apparently was unknown, at least according to the state. Um, that doesn't mean there were no tests done. It just means that there were none submitted. So. I, I thought I think that brings uh, some bearing on this this case because it has to do with managing this asset. I think their greatest asset is access to this to this aquifer, this spring water aquifer. And um, during one of our uh, our um, teleconferences, I asked Freiburg Water Company if they recognized the difference between the value of spring water versus standard artesian well groundwater. And they, they stated that they did not uh, differentiate. There was no differentiation between spring water and, and groundwater, which I found, you know, I found that surprising because they've dedicated their, their uh, spring water, one of their spring water wells under the uh, uh, condition it had to be spring water to their single bulk water customer, which is uh, Pure Mountain Springs, a wholly owned uh, subsidiary of, of Nestle Waters North America. So, um, again, if they're not seeing the value of spring water, I mean, even Coors, Coors was made famous by, you know, Pure Mountain Spring Water. I mean, there is, a, there is an increased value in that, and I think it's recognized just in the fact that an intermediary uh, Pure Mountain Springs was set up um, in order to uh, intervene or, or rather uh, uh, help uh, uh, provide the spring water to their single bulk water customer. So uh, another thing I wanted to address is that I think there's a little misinformation going on here. I saw nothing in the proposal regarding a bottling plant or, or employment to the people of this town. Um, uh, the tax revenue increases. I think are irrelevant to this proceeding. I think they have nothing to do with, with the proposal at hand. In fact, the, the proposal at hand may, <clears throat> may decrease the value, for all we know, of, of uh, the industrial zone area because if there are no checks and balances on, on uh, pumping, once the people of the town have been removed from that aquifer, the aquifer technically could be drained dry. There, it, it, there's nothing in the proposal to protect it. Once the people are removed, once the townspeople are removed. 
nothing. This proposal is, again, so vague as to where are they going to put us? Uh, they're going to find another place for us to go. But they don't say where, what the quality of the water is like, what it's going to cost the ratepayers. And the other, the other point I'd like to make, gentlemen, is that the rates are very low. In fact, if you look at the bulk rates, they're extremely low. And that helps the locals who pay uh, incrementally for their water monthly with a slightly lower rates. So we're on the middle of the road, really. Uh, but if the, if the water district was looked at as a single entity buying bulk water, then why wouldn't they be afforded the same bulk rates that the other bulk purchaser would be? They have all, they have all organized. Uh, they should, even if the rates, the bulk rates were to go up, which um, I hesitate to say the exact number uh, right now, but uh, when, we, when we come to, my brief will explain the exact numbers, but the rates are very low. I think people would be shocked at how much a tanker of water costs Nestle, Nestle Water in North America, or rather Pure Mountain Spring. Um, but if everyone, if that, if that bulk water rate were to come on, and there were others sought who might want this water because, um, again, Farber Water Company has said they have not sought, they have not looked for any other purchasers of the water. So if there was, if the market was allowed to come and bear on this, we might find that there are, there are much better proposals than just standardly uh, keeping these very low rates and extending it out for, you know, a lifetime. But I haven't heard anyone mention in the contract it doesn't make any difference if it's 25 years, 15 or 10. There's an automatic rollover where it is going to keep in perpetuity, keep renewing the contract without coming back to the PUC for um, any oversight. Now, at the end of the contract period, I would like to see it come back for oversight to the PUC before it's automatically rolled over forever. Um, I, I guess... Editorially, I'll just say I only have one good use for Poland Spring water bottles. I keep one under the front seat of my car. I've been a rate payer um, and a customer to Freiburg Water Company since uh, 1988. And originally we were um, on well one. And in 1996, well two was... Uh, uh, drilled in 1997, we were put on that well, unbeknownst to us. We were on well two for a while, and then we were interrupted again and put on to well three, which Freiburg Water Company uh, didn't own at the time, and I'm not sure they own it now. I had called the Freiburg Water Company and uh, uh, several times, and they said that they were just putting in a, um, a new pump, um, and that we could go get water at the fire station, Poland Spring Water. Um, I understand and done some research that there was total lack of monitoring of well three. All I know is my, the rates have gone up paying for the water and the quality has gone down. Um, I want to just testify today that I, I, uh, I read an article uh, where the CEO of the world's largest food corporation was quoted, just happens to be Nestle Corporation. Uh, he was quoted a month ago saying that... Um, Let's see. Water is the linchpin of food security. He urged industry, government, and other stakeholders to act decisively to mitigate massive food shortages that water scarcity would cause within the next 15 to 20 years. This is a quote from the top minds in the food industry. This is expected. It is not surprising to me that the revision of this agreement with Freiburg, the people of Freiburg, would actually go past that time because a corporation needs to secure its assets. I just hope that when you turn this down, you realize that you have averted a water war in the state of Maine. Thank you. But almost 11 years ago, I invested, my husband and I invested in a business in Freiburg. And about five years ago, we had a well that was dry. And this led us to having have another well drilled. And my reason for the interest in this group was the comment that was given to me through this whole procedure. We had to have the well hydrofract. And the person, uh, we ended up with a, a good well, but it, it was a considerable expense. 
And the person who did the hydrofracking said he was very concerned about the people in the outlying areas near us that were running, having the same situation where the wells would come up dry. So it, it got me very interested in this meeting and what this concern is all about. I live in a farmhouse with a, I hate talking about this. <sighs> we have a dug well. It's been there for you know, maybe 200 years, and it's dried up twice in the last summer. We have stewardship of uh, somewhere over 500 acres of wetland. And you can't convince me that my water don't get in this aquifer. We're upriver, yet we're not consulted. And that's about all I got to say. I'm a landowner in uh, Waterford, Stoneham, and Albany. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just listening to all the points and, and uh, I think everybody's got something to stand on. But I'm just kind of confused why anyone would negotiate or even consider doing business with a company that will sue you if you don't. I've been there for 15 years. And um, I just wanted to make a comment about climate change and what people have been talking about the weather. Okay, who would have ever thought what happened on the Mississippi? How many gallons is that? And that's all I want to say. I forgot to mention that um, in the town of Freiburg, actually, Nestle has two pumping stations. One is out uh, going 302 towards Bridgeton, but it's still in Freiburg. Hey, hey, hey. Where's our hearing? Thank you.